All right, folks, so um, we uh, watched in our previous videos how it is that we go about developing a Henry classification uh, for a set of fingerprints so that we could then file that fingerprint card uh, in a physical file cabinet so that if we needed to search for that set of fingerprints later on, or if we were looking to search it against an unknown set of fingerprints, we could do so. Uh, but there are a couple of other classification systems that we also need to get to know. And those are classification systems used for fingerprints that are not filed in file cabinets, but are rather saved in large databases. And two of the databases we'll talk about and, and systems of classification that we'll learn about are the NCIC database and the APHIS database. Uh, the NCIC database uh, stands for the National Crime Information Center database. And then the other database, the one you're probably more familiar with, the one you hear about on TV, on television shows like CSI, is the APHIS database, which is the Automated Fingerprint Identification System. And the one that hooks all the different state APHIS systems together is called IAFIS, or the Integrated Automated Fingerprint Identification System. All right, so let's talk about NCIC. The NCIC database uh, is the National Crime Information Center database, and it's a database started in 1967, so it's pretty old. It's about 50 years old, uh, and it's used to track crime-related information, and it's managed by the FBI. Uh, this database has lots of information in it, not just fingerprints. It also contains information about serial numbers on guns. It contains information on violent criminals and their MOs. It even has information about uh, gang activity throughout the United States. Uh, the NCIC is divided into 21 different files or smaller databases, some of which I just mentioned. And one of those databases is a fingerprint database. Um, now, the system of classification for storing fingerprint records in this database is a little bit different from Henry. And the good thing, actually, for you is it's a little bit easier than the Henry system for classification. All right, so uh, when we look at a set of fingerprints, um, one of the first things, of course, we do with a set of fingerprints is to block it. And so we've learned how to differentiate between the different fingerprints, arches, loops, and whorls. We've learned about the different types of whorls, so how do we tell between a plain whorl and a central pocket whorl? How do we figure out whether a fingerprint is an ulnar or radial loop? And then how we use that information, uh, including things like tracings and ridge counts, to develop a Henry classification. So we can look at this set of fingerprints, which has been blocked, and then we can use that fingerprint block to develop the Henry system of classification. But we've learned that the Henry system of classification is it's kind of complicated. So let's talk about these other systems which are a little easier to use. Um, if we have a set of fingerprints that have been blocked, uh, here we have our Henry system of classification. But notice below that there are these 20 empty boxes that have not been filled out. These 20 boxes is where we would include the NCIC classification if we were going to enter these fingerprints into the NCIC database or we would fill in these blocks uh, with information if we we're going to put it in the APHIS database. So the NCIC and the APHIS uh, classification systems basically include 20 blocks um, that you fill with characters that are either numbers or letters and you include uh, two characters for every fingerprint. So we have 20 blocks because there are 10 fingerprints and there are two characters per fingerprint. So we would include for finger number one two characters here in these first two blocks. For finger number two we would include two characters for these next two blocks. Finger number three we'd have two characters that go in these in these next few blocks. So this is what an NCIC classification actually looks like. It's just a string of 20 uh, numbers or letters, so 20 characters long, that help us to know um, which fingerprints are in which block of the fingerprint card. The, the APHIS classification looks very similar. It's, again, it's also 20 blocks long, uh, and it also consists of characters. The difference is they're all letters and they're not numbers. All right, so now that we kind of know what a, an NCIC or an APHIS would look like, let's talk about the, what we would write in those 20 blocks. We need to know what the classification codes are for NCIC uh, versus Henry versus uh, APHIS. All right, so let's talk about the, the arches and loops first. Um, if the fingerprint that we're looking at, and remember the first two boxes of the card would be finger number one. So let's say finger number one, the right thumb, was a plain arch. Uh, if we're doing NCIC, then we would put two capital A's in those first two blocks indicating that's a plain arch. Now, it, using NCIC, if finger number one was a tented arch, we would put two capital T's. So you'll notice in NCIC we differentiate 
between plain arches and tenet arches, but notice for aphis, uh, there's no differentiation between plain arches and tenet arches. So if the fingerprint is a plain arch, we would put an A and a U, but also if it's a tenet arch, we'd simply put an A and a U. So there's no way for us to differentiate between the different types of arches using uh, the aphis system, but we do differentiate them using the NCIC. Now, what if the fingerprint that we're classifying is a loop? Well, APHIS, uh, we don't differentiate between ulnar and radial loops. In the APHIS system, we either use LS if the fingerprint is a left slanting loop, or we use RS if the fingerprint is a right slanting loop. So think about, for example, if it's an ulnar loop on the right hand. So let's say finger number four, which is the right ring finger. Let's say that was an ulnar loop. Now think about a right ring finger fingerprint being an ulnar loop. It would be slanting towards the pinky. So it would be slanting to the right. So in the APHIS system of classification, we would simply call that a right slanting loop. Uh, we wouldn't call it an ulnar loop. But notice in the NCIC classification, uh, we do differentiate between ulnar and radial loops. But instead of putting letters, whenever we have a loop using NCIC, we use numbers. And if it's an ulnar loop with NCIC, then we put down the ridge count of that loop. So if, let's say, for example, finger number one was a an ulnar loop with a ridge count of 10. We would write in those first two blocks, which are the two blocks for finger number one, we would put a one and a zero, indicating that it's an ulnar loop. We know it's a loop because it's got a number, and it has a ridge count of 10. If it was an ulnar loop that had a ridge count less than 10, let's say eight, again, every finger has two boxes. So if it's eight, we're not just gonna write eight, we're gonna write zero eight. If it's got a ridge count of 20, we'd write two zero, so on and so forth. Now notice, it, what if it's a radial loop? Using the NCIC classification, what we do is we still use a number. Again, whenever you see a number in the NCIC, that tells us immediately that that fingerprint is a loop. But what we do with radial loops to differentiate them from ulnar loops is we always add 50 to whatever the ridge count is. So let's say that finger number two was a radial loop, um, and let's say it had a ridge count of 10. What we would put it for the NCIC is we'd actually put 60 which would indicate, okay, it's greater than 50, so that tells me right away it's a radial loop, and so that tells me it's a radial loop with a ridge count of 10. Now, if it's a, a radial loop and it's uh, an aphis, again, we don't differentiate radial versus ulnar. All we do is differentiate LS versus RS. So let's say we had a radial loop on the left hand. So let's say we had a, a loop that was slanting to the right uh, on the left hand. So let's say finger number... Uh, seven, uh, the left index finger, let's say it's a right slanting radi uh, loop, which is a radial loop on the left hand, we would just put RS as opposed to ulnar. So let's look at some fingerprints here and let's look at how we would do the NCIC versus APHIS classification. All right, so looking at this set of fingerprints, let's just focus on the loops for now. Um, so we see, for example, that the finger number one is a whirl. Let's just skip that for now. So we're going to skip these first two boxes, which would deal with this first finger. But let's look at this finger number two. Uh, so the, the classification is going to go in the second two boxes. So these, these boxes here. We can see that from the block, it's an ulnar loop with a ridge count of three. So if I'm doing NCIC, all I need to do is write the ridge count in. So I would write zero, three in this box here. Let's skip number th finger number three because it's a whirl. We'll come back to that a little later. But let's look at finger number four. Again, using the NCIC classification, we can see that it's an ulnar loop. And so what I'm going to write in, in those boxes is a ridge count of one, six. Now for these fingerprints, if I was doing the APHIS, I wouldn't write numbers. I would simply write that these two fingerprints are right slanting. So I'd put RS for this fingerprint. So here in these boxes, I'd write R and S. And then again, this, this one is also right slanting, so I put RS for, for this one. Now look at this fingerprint. Finger number six is a radial loop. Now, if I was doing APHIS, all I would do is say it's right slanting, because it's RS, right slanting. But if I'm doing NCIC, this fingerprint, instead of putting one, two, which is what the ridge count is, I'd actually write six, two, because we always add 50 to the ridge count. All right. Now let's look at another fingerprint card. All right, so we're just looking at the whirls and arches for right now. All right, so this fingerprint is an ulnar loop. So this one's an ulnar loop. This one's an ulnar loop. So if I was doing NCIC, all I would do is write in the ridge counts, 15, 14, 2, same here, 5, 18. But again, remember, if I was doing APHIS, I wouldn't put 
the ridge counts, I'd put right slanting, right slanting. So R, S, R, S, R, S. Now this one is L, S, left slanting, left slanting, left slanting. But notice that these two fingerprints are arches. If I'm doing NCIC, because this one's a tenet arch, I would put a capital T, capital T here. But because this one's a plain arch, I would put capital A, capital A. Remember, though, with APHIS, we don't differentiate between tenet arches and plain arches. All we would do is put for this one AU, indicating it's an arch. And for this one, we would also just put AU, because using the APHIS system, we don't differentiate between uh, plain arches and tenet arches. All right, now what if we have whorls? With APHIS, it's really easy, because with APHIS, all we do for any whorl is we simply write WU. WU. It doesn't matter if it's a plain whorl or a central pocket whorl or a double loop whorl or an accidental whorl. All we write is just WU. And we don't even worry about the type of whorl, nor do we worry about the type of tracing. Now NCIC is a little bit more specific because what we do with those is the first character, whenever it's a whorl, we're going to write a P if it's a plain whorl, a C if it's a central pocket whorl, a lowercase d if it's a double loop whorl, or an X if it's an accidental world. Now the reason we don't put an A is we don't want to uh, mess up uh, accidental worlds for arches, so we use X for accidental world. And then the second character is going to be the tracing. So for example, if we have a plain world, we're going to put P and then I. Or if we have a central pocket world with an outer tracing, we'd put C and then O. So it's a little bit more specific, whereas APHIS just writes WU if it's a world. With NCIC, we specify what type of whorl, and we specify what the tracing is. So, for example, looking at these fingerprints, oop, let me go back. Looking at these fingerprints, here, with this fingerprint, it's a double loop whorl, so lowercase d and an O, so I would put lowercase d and then a capital O right here. All right, that's using NCIC. Now, if I was doing APHIS, I wouldn't put DO here, I'd simply write WU. All right, let's look at this fingerprint. This is a, a ulnar loop. If I was using the NCIC, I would simply write 07, which is its tracing. If I was doing APHIS, I would write uh, right slanting or RS. In fact, actually, let's do this one together. So let's let's do an I let's do a, an NCIC first, and then let's do the APHIS afterwards. All right, so take out a sheet of paper. I'll pause your pause the video for just a moment. Take out a sheet of paper and then uh, write 20 boxes in a row and do that twice because we're going to do an NCIC together and then we're going to do an APHIS together. So pause the video real quick and take out a piece of paper and write down those boxes. All right, so after you've done your boxes, let's let's do these together. Let's do the NCIC first. That one's the, the little more complicated one. All right, so let's look at finger number one. So for finger number one, it's a double loop whorl with an outer tracing. So in my first box, I'm going to put a D. And in the second box, I'm going to put a capital O for outer tracing. Now looking at the next fingerprint, it's an ulnar loop with a, tra uh, with a ridge count of 7. So all I'm going to root is a 0 and 7. All right, for this next fingerprint, I can see that it's a whorl. Um, it looks like it could either be a central pocket or a plain whorl. Let's just use the top one. We're going to call it a central pocket whorl, and we can see it has an inner tracing. So I'm going to put C and then I. All right, next fingerprint, I can see that it's an ulnar loop. I can see it's a ridge count is 5, so with ulnar loops, all we do is write down the ridge count, so it's going to be 0, 5. The next one, again, is an ulnar loop with a ridge count of 14, so we're going to write 1, 4. All right, the next fingerprint, finger number 6, is a whorl. It's a central pocket whorl with an outer tracing, so I'm going to put C, O. All right, look at the next fingerprint. This is a radial loop. So in this case, it has a ridge count of 13, sorry, 3. We can see that the person who blocked it actually wrote 53, so that helps us with our NCIC. So we're not going to write R, or we're going to write 53, because we know that, that this is a radial loop with a ridge count of 3, so it's actually 53. All right, here's another whorl. It's a central pocket whorl with an outer tracing, so CO. All right, now we have a, a plain arch, so we're going to put capital A, capital A. And then again, we have... It could be a tenet arch. Looks like someone might have also called it a loop with a ridge count of two. Let's just call it a tenet arch. So we'll put capital T, capital T. So your NCIC should read lowercase d, capital O, 0, 7, capital C, capital I, 0, 5, 1, 4, capital C, capital O, 5, 3, capital C, capital O, 
capital A, capital A, capital T, capital T. All right, let's look at the same set of fingerprints, and let's do it using the APHIS classification system, which is much simpler. All right, so looking at this first fingerprint, we can see it's a whirl. Remember, we don't differentiate using APHIS one whirl for another, so all we write is W in the first box and then U for the second one. All right, next fingerprint, this is a loop. So all we do is write, if it's right slanting or left slanting, we can see this is a right slanting, so we're going to put capital R, capital S. Next one's a whirl. Again, all we do with whirls is put W, U. Next one is a right slanting loop, so we're going to put R, S. We're not going to worry about radial or ulnar or ridge counts. Again, next one also a right slanting loop, so R, S. Next fingerprint, fingerprint number six is a whirl, so we just put W, U. Next fingerprint is a radial loop, but again, we don't worry about radial versus ulnar. All we do is right slanting versus left slanting. Well, on the left hand, radial loops are right slanting, so we're going to put R, S. Next fingerprint is a whirl, so we put W, U. Next fingerprint is an arch, and again, remember, using APHIS, we don't differentiate between plain arches and tenant arches, so we're just going to put A, U, which is what we put for arches. Next fingerprint is a tenant arch. Again, all arches are simply A, U, so we put A, U. So our APHIS classification should read W, U, R, S, W, U, R, S, R, S, W, U, R, S, W, U, A, U, A, U. So we can see it's a pretty simple classification system. Uh, both NCIC and APHIS are really simple, but they're a little bit different. We can see that APHIS is a little simpler, but it doesn't quite have the same amount of detail as NCIC. All right. Now, what if we have some odd fingerprints? What if we have, for example, a fingerprint that's missing? So let's say a person is missing their, their middle finger. Well, what we do in the boxes then, and we do the same thing for NCIC or IAFIS, is we put two X's, indicating that they don't have a finger in that location. Or what if the fingerprint is scarred and we're unable to classify it? Uh, we use an SR uh, for both systems of classification. Now, what if the fingerprint is unable to classify, meaning it's smudged or smeared? Well, with NCIC, we actually don't even try to classify the card. We actually send it back to the contributor, asking him to roll another card. With APHIS, though, we would simply put a UC, meaning unable to classify. If we're unable to print the finger, maybe, for example, the person has a handicap where we can't actually roll the print. With APHIS, we would put a UP, but with NCIC, we would send the card back and tell them to try again to try to get a fingerprint for us. So. All right, now, the great thing about the, these classification systems is uh, you can, in some cases, convert, for example, NCIC into a Henry. So with this fingerprint classification, this is obviously an NCIC because we can see it has numbers in it. Uh, we can actually take this NCIC and convert it into a Henry system by first taking the NCIC classification and putting it in block form. Uh, so if we have our block written out, we can convert and notice we can see that finger number one is an ulnar loop because we can see, again, all loops have numbers. Because it's less than 50, it must be ulnar. So we can put an ulnar loop sign down here, our slash, with our ridge count of 16. We can see finger number two is a plain whirl with an inner tracing. So we can put that down here. Finger number three is an ulnar loop, again, less than 50, so it has to be ulnar. Ulnar loop with a ridge count of 14. The next one is an ulnar loop, ridge count of 13. This one is an ulnar loop, ridge count of 14. Here we have a, a central pocket whirl with an inner tracing, so we can put that down here. Next we have an ulnar loop with a ridge count of 13. An ulnar loop with a ridge count of 16. Here's an ulnar loop with a ridge count of 12. And then the last one is a plain whirl with an outer tracing. So now that we've converted our NCIC into block form, we already know how to go from block form and convert that into a Henry. So if you have an NCIC, you can definitely take an NCIC and convert it into Henry. Now the difficult part is, what if you only have a Henry? Can we convert a Henry classification into an NCIC? And the answer to that is sometimes. Um, look how detailed the, the NCIC system is. It gives us ridge counts, it gives us tracings, but the problem with the Henry is we have some of the information, but not all of it. For example, the primary definitely tells us which fingerprints are whirls, but notice the primary doesn't tell us whether or not those whirls are plain whirls or central pocket whirls or double loop whirls. And to be able to do an NCIC, I would need to know that. For example, I need to know that finger number 10 is a plain whirl to be able to do an NCIC. The, the, the Henry primary will tell me it's a whirl, but it won't tell me if it's a plain whirl. 
so it is possible to go from Henry to NCIC, uh, but sometimes we'll miss, be missing some of the information. But it's definitely possible to convert an NCIC classification uh, into a Henry. Um, so anyway, that's the NCIC classification system and the APHIS system classification, or APHIS classification system. They're very useful. Uh, they are used for classifying fingerprints that we store in large databases. Um, and, and they're great, and, and we can convert between uh, one and another, uh, but not always. We can't always go, for example, from an APHIS to an NCIC. We definitely can go from NCIC to APHIS. We can definitely go from NCIC to Henry. Uh, sometimes we can go from Henry to NCIC, uh, but we, we can't uh, go from APHIS to NCIC, and we can't go from APHIS to Henry. So Anyway, those are the three different classification systems. Henry, we've already learned, and now we know about how to do an APHIS classification and how to do an NCIC classification.